Yo, what's up everybody? It's RJ and today I'm doing a video explaining exactly why what is natural isn't automatically good. And more specifically, I'm going to talk about how this affects depression and how this can be explained philosophically. There is a type of fallacy that I'm going to get into in just a bit called appeal to nature. I'm going to talk about that and how that relates to, um, to these issues. So setting the groundwork here, I was prompted to do the video based on the fact that uh, a guy I know online who's fairly well known himself, he has um, businesses, quite a following, he's rather successful, he tends to party a little bit um, or a lot, <laughs> and um, he had recently come out and... Um, confessed that he is dealing with depression or realized that he had been depressed for a long period of time how he realized this was he took mushrooms he took a psychedelic uh, he tripped on um, an amount of psychedelic mushrooms that was the first kind of impulse that that led him to become aware of his depression along with some other things watching um, some some content online about depression and realizing that he could identify with a lot of the symptoms so anyway, so how does this relate to appeal, the appeal to nature fallacy? Someone commented on one of his posts and basically had said, and I'm going to leave this person anonymous because I don't see why it's relevant to, to bring their name into it. Those of you who know, know. Those of you who don't, great. doesn't matter. Uh, someone had commented and said to the person, hey, you know what? You know, the reason you're, you were experiencing depression is because you removed yourself from nature. You, know, you put yourself in a comfortable bubble of sorts, basically suggesting that because he's well to do and lives in a comfortable house and drives comfortable cars and goes to you know nice restaurants and things like that, that's what you know that was what was the cause of his depression. Maybe hypothetically, it could be the case that someone could become depressed for some type of reason that has nothing to do with nature because they are well to do. Maybe they feel guilty, maybe they don't have any real connections for some reason with other humans if people are there just for business or for money or to take advantage of the person but that doesn't sound like it's the case with this individual and so I want to specifically focus on this appeal to nature argument so the person had said well you know the reason you're not well or you're, you're feeling depressed is because you know you removed yourself from nature um, and he was trying to use that line of arguing to suggest that he the person doesn't shouldn't take supplements he was he was uh the person who's depressed was saying that you know he has been taking supplements working out eating better and he's starting to feel a lot better you, you can only take someone at their word i don't know whether he's feeling better or not i would assume that he you know he's being honest just for the sake of simplification here the clincher here right is the person says when was the last time you saw an animal in nature taking a supplement to stay alive or to feel good? If you use that line of arguing, that line of reasoning, when was the last time you saw an animal in nature doing almost anything a human does? Wearing clothes, making a YouTube video, going on Facebook, writing notes down in a notepad, drinking coffee. When was the last time you saw an animal in nature having a sip of coffee? Driving in a car, building a home, reading a book, reading a magazine. Bears and deer and bees don't do these sort of things. So does that mean that we should just stop doing everything that human has humans have uh, accomplished or created and just say, nope, we have to go back to living in the woods. We have to do only the things that, that bears and deer and monkeys do. Of course not. It's completely irrational. All right, guys, I had to take it inside because it was starting to rain outside and <gasps> something natural was messing me up and bad for me. Oh, my God. So anyway, so I'm going to get into some, you know, philosophical treatment of this uh, nat um, appeal to nature fallacy in just a second. But I want to point out that I'm not on this moral high ground where, uh, I, you know, I've never made this mistake myself. In fact, my brother-in-law pointed out at some point in time that I was doing this and I forget what the exact um, example was. Anytime you you refer to something that you do or that you appreciate and you just simply say, well, it's na it's natural, so that's why I like it. I want to eat organic foods and I don't want pesticides and I don't want, um, you know, I don't want to eat processed foods because, you know, they're not natural. They're not found in nature, right? 
intuitively, this actually makes sense to me. Like, I'm like, okay, so the, yeah, I mean, if it grows out of the ground, you know, if you could find it in a, in a tree somewhere and you eat it, that's like what, you know, God or Mother Nature or whatever intended for people to eat. You know, Cheerios or, you know, anything processed, you know, processed whatever, chips, candy. Who's to say that this is, you know, positive, you know, healthy, right? <laughs> Who's to say that it's healthy um, for, for, for nutrition, for food, for nourishment? Well, you know, I guess the scientific approach with that would be to sort of break down what you're eating. So are there harmful chemicals um, that have been shown to be damaging to humans in the food? Um, or is it just sugar and wheat and whatever um, manipulated in such a way to, to give it um, a different shape or form or, or taste or texture. Um, if it's the latter, you have to argue on a basis of whether or not sugar and wheat and those sort of things are, are positive for your health, healthy for you to uh, consume. If it's um, just the fact that you can't find a Cheerio or uh, you know lollipop growing on a tree somewhere, well, that's probably not on its own really a good enough reason to avoid eating that thing. I just want to point out that I'm not above this issue, right? I haven't, um, I haven't been so perfect in my thinking and reasoning to avoid committing this appeal to nature myself. I don't know. It's, it's a challenging trap that we could fall into because some of the things that we have that are very val valuable in our society are kind of not too far removed from nature, right? So, you know, my coffee cup is, you know, clay. It's, it's a type of mud and, or sand or stone or whatever that's been shaped. Um, obviously, this hasn't been shaped by hand, but let's just say, you know, these were around before, you know, you had machines doing it. Um, you know, you could shape clay into the, the shape of a cup and then put it in a kiln, which is just a hot, you know, flame bath and oven and uh it'll harden and then you could use it as a, as a cup so so see that's great that's from nature you could say okay well you know we don't need a nuclear power plant you know we could we can get electricity out of ge geothermal or you know coal or whatever well just because those things are more immediately they feel like nature it's like ah a piece of coal i could find that or or water in a river i could find that see the thing with that is so is it so is an atom you know, the process by which we extract power from a, from from uh, nuclear fusion isn't something we can all wrap our heads around very easily. Whereas a turbine spinning in a river is. So we go, oh, that's more na natural. That's more nature. Trust me, I've made this mistake before, and it's just it's not exactly. It's just not. It's not a um, philosophically sound way of arguing. You're not arguing from you know. The first premise that you're, one of the main premises in that argument, no matter how you spin it, is that which is from nature is automatically good. So if everything you're saying rests on, well, the better thing comes from nature, you're, you're basically creating a tautology, which is when you say X is X, you know, because um, you're trying to say what is good and you're saying nature is good, therefore nature is good. Well, that's your whole argument. You're saying, I like apples because they're from nature. And what's from nature is good. Apples are from nature. What's from nature is good. So apples are good. Well, everything rests on this belief that what is from nature is good. If you want to get really super critical of it, well, isn't everything from nature? I mean, my house, my TV, Everything is from nature in one way, shape, or form or another. We're manipulating nature, are we not? Did we somehow extract some element from outside of nature when, when, when we make things and, and develop things? Is this, is this book from another dimension? Is this extracted from an alien planet or a meteor? No, it's, it's just tree pulp and dye and it's cut and manipulated in such a way. So... This person saying, well, you don't, you shouldn't take supplements because when was the last time you saw a bear or some other creature taking a supplement? Guess what? Supplements contain minerals and vitamins and properties and atoms that exist in vegetables and fruits and 
bone marrow and whatever else from nature. So when an animal eats a bunch of blueberries, they're getting very specific micronutrients that we can take in a supplement instead of eating blueberries. Not saying one's better than the other or not, but it's fallacious to simply say that which is from nature is good on its own. That's just, it's, it's like I explained to you, it becomes a tautology, it becomes circular reasoning. As with a lot of philosophical reasoning or argument arguments, it, it can be pretty challenging to really get to the bottom of what you're trying to prove. In this case, the appeal to nature, um, this is shown on Wikipedia, actually admits that it can be possible that using an appeal to nature um, can be logical or you know logically valid in some frameworks, but it all depends on how you define good and how you define nature. So, you know, I'm just speaking in general terms here, but as you can see here with this illustration, this visual, saying what is natural is good is in and of itself an opinion or an assumption, right? So, um, you know, don't, we don't want to just make all of our choices based around how immediate something is to nature. Um, I've made this mistake myself in the past, um, and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't rest on solid footing philosophically. It's not a philosophically sound way of reasoning. One final example to kind of illustrate this point. We can easily identify that certain things are not good, even if they do originate in nature. So take, for example, you know, poison from a frog or poison or, or the, uh, the stuff that a, sh a skunk creates, you know, when it's excited and it shoots out the stinky stuff, um, you know, or or the venom in a snake. Well, you know, you don't want those those substances in your body. You don't want to interact interact with those those substances, but they're from nature. They're completely natural. Um, it's 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 a perfect example of how not everything that originates from nature is going to be helpful or positive to your life. It's not the case that things are good because they're from nature or bad because they're from nature or bad because they're not from nature. Um, we need to have more rigorous criteria for what it is that we consider good or bad. So anyway, guys, that's what I got for, for this video. I want to know what you think. I studied philosophy as an um, undergrad at college, and um, to be honest, I didn't get my degree. Um, I was there for five years, give or take. You know, while I consider myself to be a pretty smart dude at times, for the most part, some of this stuff is really deep. And uh, to really get a, gra uh, a strong grip on philosophy and how to apply it and how to understand it takes effort, a little mental muscle, but it takes effort. And so with these videos, I want to keep the ball rolling so I don't mind growing and learning um, with you guys, with the audience. So I do my best to get the meat and the potatoes out to, um, to the people, to you guys with the videos. And then if there's um, more to be said later, if I can clarify or add to what it is I'm saying later, all the better. You'll find out that there's philosophy channels on YouTube that have really, really detailed, in-depth discussion of all of these topics, fallacies, um, you know, arguments, terms. So this isn't specifically a philosophy channel. I might touch on some philosophical concepts, but it's more of a just RJ channel. I'm just talking about my ideas. I do a little bit of commentary. I might be funny on some videos. Um, I might talk about science, philosophy, current events, whatever. So it's just kind of a conversation. So that's why I don't try to be so you know, directed to the point. I think that it's cool to have a conversation online. I think it's positive. Um, I think it's beneficial because everything we consume online for the most part is so, it's so highly produced. There's so much um, production value and it's usually people trying to knock you over the head with their viewpoint. This is good, this is bad. This is right, this is wrong. Even in this video, I'm sort of saying appeal to nature is a, is a, poor way of arguing it's 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 a sort of a empty way of making an argument 
maybe I'm wrong. Maybe like I like even like Wikipedia said, there is some context in which the definitions or whatever, however you set up the argument or the the explanation, where that can be the case. Um, I could think of something right off the top of my head. If I say I want to go camping and I want to enjoy camping, and I say, well, that which is enjoyable or camping, oh, what, that which is enjoyable is which is true to the essence of the thing or the nature of the thing. And I say, well, camping by definition is being out in the woods. And so if I go camping in a parking lot, I'm not going to enjoy it. Well, why not? Because it's not in nature. So it's not good. Right. Because I'm not resting on the, the basis that that which is in nature is automatically good. It's that which is true to its essence is good for the sake of a purpose. So, I mean, I don't have this all like kind of written out, but you get where I'm coming from. If you want to go camping, you want to go camping in nature. So it's not good because nature is good. It's good because it's aligned with that activity known as camping. So I'm going camping. I don't want to camp in my bedroom. That's not camping. That's just going to bed, going to sleep. So sometimes that which is in nature is good, but not simply because it's in nature. It's usually in virtue of some other aspect of the thing or the event or the topic. So anyway, guys, I've been running my mouth. Thanks for watching. Comments. Drop me some links if you have any ideas or different things you want me to check out. Um, video requests. And uh, yeah, peace.